I mentor a lot of people now, um, either Harvard grads or Berkeley grads or people who reach out to me for mentoring. And, you know, often they're just starting out or they're mid-career or something like that. And I mean, I'm I'm just starting out. I feel like I, I'm mid career. I'm I'm at the beginning. But anyway, I try to try, I try to be helpful. And one of the things I always say is like, good musicianship never goes out of style. You know, like good musicianship. The world always needs good musicians, yeah. like and good musicianship and um, tastefulness. You know, and um, so yeah. There, there's a guitarist in FX Pedal Planet. You would. Uh be very interested in in, mm. in and that's a guy called nate lopez i'll okay. send you uh he plays a hybrid guitar so it's cool. uh, you know and uh i interviewed nate a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. he he plays um he, he can turn his hand to all styles different styles of uh music mm -hmm. whether it be sort of indian influenced music where you've got that drone note on underneath and he's playing oh, it's just beautiful Wow. Does he play a hybrid like bass guitar? So bass strings and, and guitar? Absolutely. Like Charlie Par Charlie Hunter style? Yeah. yeah. And, so uh, I, I played that for a while. My No Love Lost record, I'm playing a hybrid uh, guitar. I'm playing the bass and the guitar. Wow. Um, so I know what, I know a little bit about what that guitar entails. And man, you know, I loved playing it. It was really cool. Um, but boy man <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's we, intense it is and this when nate plays there's just so much going on mm -hmm. so he's playing all the melodies the, the the rhythmic parts the bass lines i'd love to hear it i'd love to oh, hear it's, him he's yeah. just and when as he was playing i was just oh, i was just silent it's just like focused on him it was just a phenomenal thing so but uh, yeah but you've also written a book mm-hmm How's, how's that gone for you? <laughs> yeah, I just, um, well, I didn't just, I finished it uh, about a year ago and um, shopped it around to publish, to agents um, and got a fantastic agent at the end of last year, middle, last summer, I guess, or this summer, sorry, finished it last year, <laughs> shopped it around this year, got a, got an agent in 2020, in the middle of 2020. So, um, we're just getting ready to start shopping it to publishers. It's a, it's a songwriting book That's and right. really, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's currently called the ultimate guide to writing a song. That's um, right. I don't know if that name will stay, but that's what the name is now. Um, it really was, I joke, um, with people and say like, I wrote it by mistake or like, I didn't mean to write it. Um, which is obviously a joke because you don't write a 300 page book by mistake but um it really came from i have i had i've always had this debilitating fear of the blank page even when you know i can put on a song that i've written and and say like wow that's you know i think that's a great song like that's that's the best i can do and know that i've I've done that. I still, I still would always come to the blank page pretty freaked out. Mm. And I got super tired of that feeling. Um, about four years ago is when I started writing the book. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to sit down and write a checklist for myself. Like, here's how I write a song. So that the next time I sit down, all I have to do is follow the checklist. Like I, my brain doesn't even have to be involved. I just do what the checklist says. And so I did that and, um, and it worked. And then I showed it to a few friends who are songwriters and composers and said like, Hey, I just did this thing. Like maybe it might help you. And they were totally blown away by it and started using the system right away. And so I was like, huh, there's something here. Mm. And I thought, you know, I had, man, so much heartache and suffering over songwriting for me. And if I could help one person avoid the amount of heartache and suffering that I avoided, then like my job would be done. So I thought I have to turn this into something 
because without a little bit more explanation, you know, I I had given it to people who are really great songwriters, so they knew what a chorus was. Mm-hmm. They knew what, you know, they knew that they were headed towards a shitty first draft. They knew that, you know, what a pre-chorus was and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So I felt like I needed to... I wanted to take a person through, like, writing one song, you know. Yeah. So, um, so I did it. And I didn't work on it steadily. You know, I wasn't like, I'm writing a book. It was sort of like every so often I'd sit down and maybe do a couple of weeks of steady work on it. And then I wouldn't for months on end. Um, and then eventually I hired an editor because it was so st- – it's very, very step-by-step. Like very yeah. step by step, and I needed an editor to help me organize it, and that was an awesome, brilliant maneuver on my part because an editor's job is to keep it organized and to keep you plodding along, you know. And so that really, once I hired her, we we sort of made some. We st- I started making pretty serious headway, except for the fact when. I think I finished it. We thought it was finished. Okay, first draft finished. She read through it, came me back the second draft. I read through it, made some changes, gave me back the third draft. And somehow the somehow the files got mixed up. And I started editing the third draft on like an old draft. <laughs> oh man. That was like three months of work down the tubes. You know, so but like note to self if you ever start a really big writing project and you have an editor on board and you start doing revisions make sure you keep your drafts organized really yeah. well i i back up everything now <laughs> all the interviews that i'm doing it gets backed up and <laughs> it's so it's such a joke i mean it was so indicative of the whole project of like you know just just the whole thing was sort of like i mean my partner would say like now that I finally have an agent and like things are happening with it, she's like, can I just tell you how many nights you'd be on the phone with me and be like, ah, I spent six hours writing today on the book and I didn't write one song, you know, like, she's like, can I just remind you, (laughs) like, was it worth it? You know, so. Oh, it's worth it. Yeah. Worth it. When you listen to the, the uh, and you know, we'll put we'll put a link up to the book mm-hmm. when the interview comes out, and sure. you know, t- to the music as well. It, it's having listened to your music, it's mm-hmm. definitely worth it. It's, <laughs> it's definitely worth it. Yeah, we'll see. I I'm just excited that it's done, and I've given it now as a full book to a bunch of people and who aren't who aren't great song, you know, who are beginner songwriters. Yeah. And they've used it and um, are thrilled about it. And say, I mean, I have one person who's who wants to translate it into like three languages because it's been so helpful to him. Um, mm. And I'm like, OK, let's get the let's get the publishers on board first. But yes. <laughs> well, I've, I've always thought that maybe songwriting, particularly to your level and standard, it's mm. not really. Is it something that can be taught? I think. I think it can. I mean, obviously, there's certain parts of it that you just have to listen to a lot of songs and you have to live and breathe songs and, you know, know the... I hesitate to use the word rules, but you have to know what form is. You have to be Mm. a master of form and how to manipulate form. And really, you have to be a master problem solver. I mean, I don't consider myself a master songwriter. I consider myself quite a beginner at songwriting. I, I get, I'm lucky to work and co-write with, um, a couple of the, what I think are the greatest songwriters living. Some of them, some of the greatest songwriters living and, um, a guy named Steve Seskin and a guy named Jerry Vandiver. And, um, those guys, first of all, they're, you know, older than me. They have a lot more wisdom than I have. And they're just master songwriters. Like Mm -hmm. they're master problem solvers. Um, You know, they know how to get themselves out of a bind that they, they know how to, they write themselves into a corner and they can write themselves out, you know, Mm -hmm. and the speed at which they can do that. That's it. Yeah. It's that because I can, I feel like I'm, I'm confident in my ability to either not write myself into a corner in the first place, or if I do write myself out of it, Mm. but 
the thing, but it takes me a while. And I'm also a, just a slow songwriter. Like I'm a very, very slow songwriter. And the, these guys, um, man, like Steve, to be with Steve or to be with Jerry is just to see like, okay, we're going to try this, then we're going to try this, and we're going to try this, and we're going to try this, you know? And like in very short order, they've figured out a way to go forward. Now it might not be the way, you know, it might not be the way that ends up making the song brilliant, but it is a way. Hmm. And I must come, they're, they're Nashville guys um, and had number one hits in Nashville. Um, and I think it comes from so much songwriting. Well, it comes from just they're great people and they're great writers mm. that, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't want to take anything away from them. And I think it comes from co-writing well, in, that, think, in that scene. Yeah, I think as all the music industry is an industry whereby certainly as you get older and you gain that experience and that wisdom, it is definitely respected. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, you mentioned that you're probably a, a slow songwriter, but mm -hmm. you, is it slowness or is it just being meticulous and thorough at what it's you're, been, and, and, yeah. at, at your approach? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You're being very kind and generous to, to um, say it that way. But yeah, it is. I'm very, I'm very, um, I mean, I was an English major. Okay. You know, like uh, I studied poetry, uh, in, in, you know, and, and language really matters to me and, and freshness of language and freshness of metaphor and um, imagery. And so... Yeah, I'm I'm quite particular, and if I yeah. don't know the right word, I'm not gonna put something there. I'm gonna wait. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until hard work and or the gods drop that phrase into my lap. Yeah, um, and it's both. It's both hard work and the gods, you know. And and, and an example of that would be um, from the new record, a song called Mothers. Um, and that last line, that last stanza, which is, um, um, uh, oh man, uh, mothers make love and mothers make dread. Mothers get lost and mothers get dead. Mothers are in way over their heads. You know that, I mean, now it sounds like, oh, that's so, that just rolled off your tongue, like seems, but man, that, that took forever. Yeah. To get that. To get that. Um, and and when it did, it was like, you know, mic drop. The song is done. But man, did I work hard on that one. Yeah, well, that, that comes across. And I, I, I wasn't, uh, you know, when as much, you know, it, I, from the research I've done, that comes across that mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, hard working uh, ethic that you that comes across. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't seem to be someone that set, set, uh, settles for second best in that yeah. respect, that you, you, you're striving for, um, you know, almost perfection in the song, you know? And... Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I do think that there's a, I mean, look, it's always a balance as everybody and, you know, as everybody knows in, in any industry really, but especially in, in art an art of any kind like you know you want to continue creating because that's how you learn and grow and then there are times when you have to when you have something that you you know you can't settle on and so i think really then it becomes about managing your self esteem <laughs> strangely i've never said that before but i think it's true because you know you can look around and see all of these people, especially now, ne never more than now, we can open up our phone and in front of us are a million people doing a million things at a speed that seems unbelievable. You know, and there you are struggling over, a, a, you know, a one line in your song and, and it's tempting. It's tempting to, to just, um, you know, shove something in there and keep going. And there are times for that. And mm. this, that's something that I, I, I talk about in my book. There are times when you when you have to do that, like, but there are other times when it's not because, you know, 
do we do what would have happened if Leonard Cohen not taken as much not had written how many verses did he write for Hallelujah? Like, you know, what if he hadn't done that? It wouldn't have been a great as great of a song, you know. Like there are there are songs. So I think it's about managing and have and like kind of having this inner knowing of like oh I can't I ca- I gotta wait for this one. Mm. And yeah. I joke I joke in my book about what's my biggest like songwriting tool? Time. Yeah. Time is my biggest songwriting tool because if I'm if I write something and then I let it sit, I can I will know later after a week, a month, a year, two years, whether it's good and what needs to change. Do you think a lot of artists like yourself, and I know I am as a guitarist, very, very overly critical about my work. Uh, mm. you know, so I very much overanalyze. Do you mm-hmm. think that is something that comes intrinsically with artists, singers, songwriters? Mm. Well, I think you're anybody who makes something, whether it's a a wooden bowl or a a song or a poem. I mean, I think we we are critical because chances are we're doing that thing, making the wooden bowl or the poem or the song or the painting because someone else's paintings or bowls or poems inspired us and is is at a level above ours and we're trying to reach that i mean i go find an artist that doesn't have a hero you know who doesn't have an have a a reason for making art and i think i mean you know in the beginning we all know as players that's why we picked up the guitar you know like we wanted to do that i want to sound like that person you know and most and hopefully we all have the humility wherever we are at our in our journey to to realize we'll never get there and then also at the same time be um respectful of our own gifts and what those are absolutely yeah i agree i agree mm-hmm.